Okay, I want to give you a little bit of taste of the Itachi Visualization Suite. We have a demo environment set up here, and I've already logged into the application. You'll notice that I'm actually using Safari on a Mac. One thing of note here is that Itachi Visualization Suite, uh, since it is a thin client uh, that runs in the cloud, you can actually use uh, other platforms uh, such as a MacBook or even a Surface Pro. Uh, we support pretty much every modern browser from Firefox, Chrome, uh, Internet Explorer, and uh, Safari as well. Uh, so we have a demo uh, environment here, and I'm just going to walk through some of the key features. Uh, so what you're looking at when you first log in is a map. Now it will save your view based on your user preferences. So whatever your last view was, uh, that's pretty much where you start back up when you log back in the next time. Um, the way we define uh, a particular application, because Hitachi Visualization Suite is a multi-tenant application running in the cloud, uh, we actually create uh, a, a single environment uh, called a domain uh, for a particular customer deployment. Um, the domain is defined by really three things. Uh, so you can think of it as a three-legged stool. Uh, we have objects that you see here at the top, and these are your real-world things that you're modeling. These could be uh, objects that are at rest, or they could be moving, like a car. Uh, you also have uh, your second leg of the stool, which are events, and this is typically your private data sources that you're ingesting using uh, the Itachi Visualization Platform Gateway device that's installed on premise. Uh, so you can see here for our demo environment, we have four event sources set up. One is CAD or Computer Aided Dispatch. That's your 911 center calls, uh, commonly referred to as an incident. Uh, you have gunshots. Uh, in this environment, we have a gunshot sensor system, uh, as well as license plate reads or LPR, and even social, me social media, Twitter, which keys off uh, a, a, an administrator uh, settings for specific keywords. Now the third leg of the stool are layers and these are things that you just pretty much lay over top of the map. Uh, they typically don't have user interaction uh, but they provide additional information uh, depending on how you want to view uh, your application. So for instance my default here is Google Terrain. If I wanted to see traffic in this city I could just click on the Google traffic map uh, I could also get an aerial as an example. Uh, it can even overlay weather, weather radar, live imagery radar uh, as well. So the layers are really customizable. So let me come back up here. I'm going to start with the objects and I'm going to click on the most common thing, which are cameras. And we have a few cameras laid out within the city. Uh, the nice thing about this is that uh, it's color coded, so when I click on a particular object like cameras, the blue indicates the blue icon in the camera or the representation of where that physically resides. Um, so if I click on buildings here, you'll see the contrast, which is in green. Uh, so I can really represent, again, any object, any real world object. Uh, we have other customers that have completely modified this set of objects that they, they care about. Uh, for instance, a, we have a customer with a ferry system and they track uh, where those ferries are in real time along the waterways. So if I want to view a camera, uh, it's a very simple process. Uh, I just click on it once and it'll start a small uh, display. And what you'll notice is that, uh, you actually won't notice, is that this is working off of a third party system. Uh, so we have about three or four different source video management systems that we're actually showing you in this demonstration, but they all interact or the user interacts with any of these in the same manner, independent of where that actual video system resides. And that's the beauty of the gateway device, which enables that. So if I wanted to know where this is or what's the context of this, I could actually switch over here to a street view and then I could get the context uh, of this camera location. Um, I can also drill down uh, into this camera and get a larger view. Um, I can even go back in time and play back. 
So we have other cameras here as well. Now where it gets interesting is that when you start correlating the custom events with the cameras. So for instance, if I wanted to see my CAD events, these are my 911 calls, I can overlay that event data on the map. Uh, same thing with gunshot sensors. So I can start to see this visual correlation uh, of events that are occurring alongside my stationary objects uh, and even Twitter feeds. So here in this case I have a Twitter feed uh, with someone um, tweeted uh, about the police in Chinatown, a motorcade in Chinatown, it's just one example. Uh, but I could come back and you'll notice that I had some gunshot sensors so I could drill down into a one particular camera here uh, that's close by these events that have occurred, this gunshot. And the great thing is if I want to go back in time, I can drill down and click on uh, the archive tab. And what you'll notice here is that it's loading the events which are nearby that camera. So for instance, this particular gunshot uh, occurred at that time. All you do is click on that event, hit go. It'll start the playback of that camera system from that point in time or that video stream. Okay, so I can also view other objects. The great thing about this is that, for instance, in buildings, um, I can load schematics. And in my schematics, then I can have my camera locations uh, loaded uh, or positioned within the building uh, where that actually, that camera resides. And this is great in, a, in like a school system um, where you don't necessarily know where those cameras are. Uh, but just a couple clicks on that object, you can get right to uh, where you need to be. Uh, we can also look at another type of object, a bus, uh, and you'll notice that it exposes certain attributes of this object, like its speed, its heading, uh, as well as the communications uh, on the, the actual uh, bus itself. And then in the bus, I can drill down, and again, I have a schematic and so I could have the actual camera's position uh, within that, that bus so I can stream in real time. And this is a good example where our Itachi visualization platform uh, gateway that's ruggedized, which is built specifically for transit, could be used. We also have uh, another what we call complex object called a pod. Let me remove some of these events. And the pod is interesting uh, since it contains one or more cameras as well as the communications device. So for instance, if I wanted to know uh, how much bandwidth I'm consuming over this LTE connection from this pod, I could quickly drill down and look at that, that modem to see how much monthly usage, for instance, I'm consuming uh, as well as the past 15 days and what my signal strength is. The great thing about the pods though, as well, is that you can actually monitor the internal temperature of the device, uh, as well as its power usage in watts, uh, its internal temperature over time, um, and what its lowest point uh, temperature was, as well as the input current to see how it's operating. So I have actually the ability to um, go back in time. So as I'm collecting these events, I'm actually logging these uh, over each day. So if I wanted to go back, for instance, uh, on February the 28th, I could click on that day, and then on the map, it will show me all of those events uh, where they occurred. I can even drill down into uh, that particular day and view these events by the hour. So on this particular hour at 1 p.m. on February 28th, these are all the events which have occurred within that hour time frame. I can also do a global search. Uh, so if I wanted to look for any events uh, with the keyword Kennedy, for instance, 
uh, or places. I can simply type a keyword. Uh, so here are my license plate reads on uh, that particular street. And I can actually drill down and see that location. I can also see the gunshots of Kennedy Street, as well as the CAD events. And I can even search places with a simple uh, keyword search. Okay, so the great thing about Hitachi Visualization is that if um, I can segment the application by users, so I could set up my own views uh, for the cameras that interest me. Um, and the great thing is I can have as many of these as I want, uh, but they just slide out here using this, this typical video panel. Uh, so I can see the cameras. I can have up to eight here that slide out. I can also set up a separate video wall. I can have up to 16 simultaneous streams. Um, and the beauty of this is that it just simply opens up another web browser, so I can put that up on a bigger monitor, for instance, if I wanted to. Uh, in conclusion, Atachi Visualization Suite uh, really allows a lot of flexibility. Again, in terms of the objects that you're managing, uh, the event sources that you're consuming, uh, as well as, as optional layers that can be layered on top of the application. So it really is the ideal application for improved situational awareness uh, that cities are using today uh, around the country and internationally. Thank you very much.